Brad Keithley, Managing Director of Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets. Welcome to the weekly top three, the top three things on our mind here at Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets for the week of January 30th, 2023. The weekly top three is a regular segment on The Michael Duke Show. The show broadcasts on both Facebook Live and YouTube Live, as well as via streaming audio from the show's website, weekdays from 6 to 8 a.m. I join Michael weekly in the first hour of Tuesday's show from 6.25 to 7 a.m. for a discussion between the two of us about our three issues. We post the podcast of our discussion following the show on the Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets Facebook, YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify, and Substack pages, also on the Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets website, as well as the projects page on national blog site, medium.com. You can find past episodes of the weekly top three also at the same locations. Keep in mind that in addition to these podcasts, during the week, you also can follow and participate in the discussion with us of these and other issues affecting Alaska's fiscal and economic condition by following us on the Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets Facebook page and through our posts on Twitter. This week, our top three issues are these. First, we discuss the Department of Revenue's analysis of the governor's proposed carbon management program and explain why, in light of that analysis, it's fair to say the governor has no fiscal plan for the state. Second, we discuss the critical fact that's consistently missing from the press stories around the K-12 funding issue. And third, we explain why, by completely ignoring the important and positive role taxes play as part of an overall Alaska fiscal solution, The recent Alaska Policy Forum op-ed on tax policy continues to badly mislead Alaska policymakers. And now, let's join Michael. Let's jump in with, I mean, just deep, deep end with both feet. There is no fiscal plan. Brad, where, where's the, where's the fiscal plan, Brad? Where is it? We're, we're looking for it. Help me. Where's Waldo? Where's, (laughs) I'm looking for the guy with the striped shirt and the glasses. Where's Waldo? Somewhere out there. So let's step back just sort of a half a step to when the governor released his budget last December. And and along with the budget, the governor releases the 10-year plan. And the 10-year plan is there to tell us, to inform Alaskans about what the governor sees, what the administration sees going forward, how it's going to balance the budget, what it's going to be spending on, where the revenues are going to come from, how the state is is going to proceed. And in the 10-year plan, the governor, uh, the, administra- the, the administration showed that there were huge holes uh, in, the, in the budget showing huge deficits, uh, building to $900 million, nearly a billion dollars uh, in, sp- in less than five years. Um, and that uh, without, without additional revenues, uh, there were going to be you know, these, these huge deficits requiring some form of, of you know, uh, ad hoc uh, uh, supplemental revenues to, to deal with the situation. The governor had a plan though. The plan was we're going to have new revenues from carbon offsets, carbon offsets and carbon sequestration. And these new revenues are going to be beginning this year. This is, this is the 10 year plan. I'm not making this stuff up in the 10 year plan this year. It was going to be $300 million next year. FY 25. Well, this coming fiscal year, FY 24 was going to be $300 million. The, the fiscal year after that, $500 million. The fiscal year after that, FY26, uh, $750 million. And then by FY27, within, the five, within five years, we were going to be at $900 million, and we were going to stay at $900 million through the remainder of the, of the 10-year plan. And that's how, we were gonna, that's how we're going to plug the hole. That's why we don't need to talk about other new revenues. That's why we de- don't need to talk about spending cuts. That's why we don't need to talk about anything else, because we've got these revenues that are going to come in and plug the hole. And that was the governor's story in December. Well, fast forward now to uh, the introduction of the bills that are to implement uh, these two types of of carbon management, uh, the carbon sequestration uh, and uh, and the carbon offsets. Um, And here's what, and, and, and when you introduce a bill that has fiscal implications, you have to you have to accompany it with a fiscal note. And the fiscal note talks about both the anticipated costs and the anticipated revenues uh, from the plan. So here is what the governor says uh, about the 
uh, carbon offset program, about the, the trees program, using, you know, setting aside forests uh, and trees to right. as, a, as a source of, of carbon um, offset. Revenue, and this is this is from the revenue section. Revenues are not specifically estimated because of the market and timeline uncertainty for carbon offset markets. After legislative enactment, the department assumes that program stand up and initial project solicitations would occur during C, uh, calendar year 23 and 24. Project development is estimated to begin in calendar year 23 and 20, 24 and 25. It is possible that initial leasing revenues could occur after enactment based on market response, but the size of these revenues is currently indeterminate. Current approximations for voluntary carbon offset projects have a development timeline of at least 18 months before generating credits, and thus the first credits from projects could begin to accrue in calendar year 25, 26, and 27, or 27, based on uh, when they are they are initiated by market participants. The carbon offset program proposed by legislation could potentially fund future program expenses, potentially fund future program expenses, and require revenue from the program and, and require revenue from the program to cover its costs. So <laughs> Remember, three hundred million dollars next year. The ten-year plan, three hundred million dollars yeah. next year. No, nothing else going on in the ten-year plan to cover these deficits. Three hundred million dollars ten year next year. Uh, uh, Five hundred million dollars, seven hundred fifty million dollars, nine hundred million dollars uh, by calendar by fiscal year twenty-seven. None of those numbers. None of those numbers appear uh, in this particular part uh, of the budget. In this particular part of the carbon management plan. Um, and revenues are not specifically estimated because of the, of the market and timeline uncertainty. Carbon sequestration, using the uh, the uh, 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 reservoirs in the Cook Inlet to inject uh, carbon uh, and and sequester it, uh, take it out of the atmosphere, or take it potentially from entering the atmosphere and, and sequestering it underground. This is what the administration has to say about this. Revenue potential is uncertain at, at this stage. Um, while the 45Q credit, this is talking about federal legislation, while the 45Q credit will reduce the state's corporate income tax collection because the state tax code adopts by reference to the federal tax code, there are numerous fees, penalties, and other charges that will generate the revenue necessary to administer this new program. Additionally, there is potential for the state to monetize carbon injection, potential for the state to monetize carbon injection from other jurisdictions for a fee once the program is underway. For these reasons, and because obtaining a class six prim primacy from, from the Environmental Protection Agency will take time, the Department of Revenue cannot say within an acceptable margin of error where, when, what the ultimate revenue potential will be at this stage or when. So <laughs> we, we've, got, we've got a 10-year plan that's entirely, entirely, entirely dependent on, on this revenue stream to balance. Right. To avoid right. PFD cuts, to avoid um, uh, deficits that take additional savings, to avoid uh, all sorts of things, entirely dependent on these revenues. And but when push comes to shove, when revenue has to face fess up and talk about what the revenue potential is, it's like I don't, I, I don't know. I don't, did revenues? Are we going to get revenues out of these? Well, it's like it's like December. They released a fictional bestseller, right? Here it is. Here's what it is. It's going to be great. It's going to be bells and whistles and all this. And then they come down to actually game day and here's your plan. And it's like, well, it might make money sometime, maybe <laughs> down the road. It might be. But you said in December, but I know, but it's maybe. It's might be. Um, carbon offset is the new cryptocurrency for the government. Harold is not wrong in this instance. That is true. I mean, that's kind of like the whole deal. How much is it going to be? Nobody knows. There's there's this huge disconnect, in in all honesty, between the governor who 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 will not mention taxes, who will not mention alternative revenues. Huge disconnect between the governor who has you know this this pie in the sky story about how we're going to solve everything. And revenue, who's charged with actually, you know, on the ground coming up with defensible numbers that they can defend in front of the, in front of the legislature, and revenue, who, you know, says, wait, 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 you want us to put revenues on the, on uh, numbers on the on the table? We can't do that, and, right. and it's way it's way out in the future, and it's indeterminate, and I don't know. So what 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 the governor is setting up, the fiscal plan that the governor has set up, is PFD cuts, no alternative revenues know the, the 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 reality of these carbon management fees 
you know, blown apart by his own revenue department. The only thing that's remaining that the legislature has gone to time after time after time, the only thing remaining is PFD cuts. So, so the governor who, who, who tells us all's well in the world, you know, it's a, it's a great day for Alaska. We've got all of these revenues coming in. Trust and me. I got this. Trust me. I got this. It, the state has no fiscal plan, Michael. And it's just, it, it is, it is one of the most frustrating things that, you know, in, in, in my entire time dealing with this, that I've, that I've, that I've come across, you know, in previous, in previous budgets, it was, we're going to cut spending in FY21. We're going to talk about, we're going to talk about substitute revenues. We're going to talk about new revenues that's, that can substitute for, for PFD cuts. We had a plan. Now, Getting it through the legislature was something else, but at least we had a plan for how we were going to do this. Now we have no plan. We have absolutely no plan. It, the governor has has essentially given up on on trying to legitimately, with real numbers, balance the Alaska budget. And he talks about you know we're going to we, the the ten year plan has you know full statutory PFDs. There's just no way. Given, well, given what his re his own revenue department is saying, he's and he's trying to have his cake and eat it too, right? He puts up this bestseller, fictionalized bestseller of the new revenues coming in, and then on the other hand, he puts up the four thousand dollar PFD. Now, I look, I applaud him for the PFD, but you can't have it both ways. He's trying to appease everybody. That's the thing. He's gone from the uh, the the person that made everybody mad over the whole twenty eighteen budgetary process, and the sky is falling, and it's the apocalypse to let me please everybody all the time. You get the $4,000 PFD, we get these fictitious car, you know, carbon offset credits and tax credits and everything else. I mean, it's it you you can't do it. It's impossible. It's got it can't be it's got to be one or the other at this point and we know which way they're going. Like you said, he's just painted a huge target on the PFD to have Alaskans taxed for more of their PFD. So when 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 you sit here and you go, I want to support the governor. I want to support the governor's fiscal plan. I want to I want to be an advocate for the. What the hell fiscal plan is there? I mean, wh what what can you be an advocate for? Yeah yeah, it'd be great to have to have the, these carbon revenues, but not but not even not even the Department of Revenue is willing to sign on for numbers behind those carbon carbon revenues, and without them, all you've got is is PFD cuts. And, and that's not, that's, I mean, that's not a fiscal plan that works that that's, right. that's using the mechanism that has the largest adverse impact on the overall well, Alaska economy and has the largest adverse impact on 80% of Alaska families. Well, and it's short term. I mean, because it can only happen for so many years before you've consumed it all. And then we're right back to the issue of, well, we need more revenue. I mean, that's exactly where we're at. So you can't, there, there's no fiscal plan to support this time. I mean, there's, there's nothing he's, he's put nothing out there that's realistic. I mean, as you say, the, the fictional, the fictional bestseller, he's put nothing out there that's realistic to support. So it, it's, I mean, FY 21, I was, that was a great fiscal plan. It was balanced. It was, we're going to do a little bit of this, a little bit of cuts. It was in the wake of the FY 20 debacle. FY21, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of that. The, the fiscal policy working group, the legislature's fiscal policy working group picks up on that same theme. A little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of that. That's, you know, that's something that we can get behind. Yes, we're going to take the PFD down to POMB 5050, but that's acceptable in the context of an overall of an overall compromise. Now we got nothing. Now, now, now when you say the governor's fiscal plan, in all honesty, the governor's fiscal plan is PFD cuts only. No spending cuts, no alternative revenues, PFD cuts only. That is the governor's fiscal plan. And that's, you know, yeah. that's that that's that's 180 degrees distant from from where, you know, we started. He started this administration uh, uh, four years ago. <clears throat> this is becoming an exercise in frustration. Um, I mean, we've been doing this for a long time, but. To cover the same thing, uh, you know, and to point out the fallacies of what people are doing and then to watch them do it anyway and then scratch their heads and go, I don't know why we're in this fiscal crisis. I have no idea why we're in this fiscal mess is just the ultimate of frustration. I mean, I don't know how you feel, but I just feel 
uh, sometimes I'm like, I feel a lack of a little worn thin on this because how many times you have to tell people don't touch the stove, it's hot. And they lay, lean over on it and put their hand down on it. You know what I mean? It's that, that's where we're at these days. It seems like, well, the, the problem, the, the thing that bothers me, Michael is, is there's no leadership now. I mean, as I say in FY 20, we were going to cut. All right, let's cut. That didn't work. FY 21, we were going to use a balanced approach. All right, let's use a balanced approach. FY 22, FY 23, we were going to do POMB 50, 50 and cut a little bit. All right. I don't really like this because we're not, we don't have substitute revenues, but okay. At least there's, there's a plan for, for how we get there. Now we're in FY 24, the FY 24 10 year plan. And there's nothing, there's nothing. There's these fictional revenues out there that, that is the plan. Um, and that's just, I, <laughs> There's no leadership. I mean, the the yep. leadership is we're going to crash and burn. We're going to take the PFD down. Sorry, but I'm but I'm not going to talk about anything else. Yeah. And uh, and and you know I'm going to make this stuff up. Somebody talked to me over the summer. Somebody buttoned hold me over the summer and told me these things are great. Um, sort of like you know somebody once once talked to somebody about the LNG project. These numbers are great. Right. Um, and we're going to stick those in there for a while. I, it's just. Um, and the legislature, the legislature is reacting in a way, uh, you know, you, you listen to Kathy Giesel talk about it. Well, we're going to take this stuff seriously. We're going to be deliberate about it because it has long-term consequences. Yeah, it has long-term consequences. And yes, you need to be deliberate about it. But the but since the alternative is PFD cuts and she doesn't care about PFD cuts, in fact, she kind of likes PFD cuts, they're not gonna, they're not gonna speed through, they're not gonna, you know give give a, a expedited consideration to, to this proposal because the alternative is PFD cuts and, and they don't care about them. You know, if right. there were, if we had taxes, if we had substitute revenues sitting down there and, and this program would back out those taxes, they'd be all over it. It would be, you know, let's get a special committee. Let's focus on this stuff. Let's get it through. But since the alternative, the only alternative the governor has given them is PFD cuts. The only alternative they have is, is PFD. They're fine with that. So let's take all the time in the world. Uh, to go through this world, to go through this program. It's just, th there's just no leadership. The governor in the second term, you know, we talked at one point about, was he going to try to be a legacy governor or was he going to try to be, was he going to try to leave a legacy or was he, you know, going to start running for whatever he's running for in four to six years? I mean, th this answers it. He's running right. for whatever he's going to run for in four to six years. Yeah. T tell Alaskan stories um, uh, you know, make up, make up fiction and, uh, and say everything's right with the world when in fact it's not. Right. Uh, Deshana says we had a special committee that was the fiscal policy working group and we had a plan and it was laid out and no, it was not going to make, <clears throat> it was not going to make everybody happy. In fact, everybody was probably going to be mad about some part of it. Um, but it was a pretty, <laughs> it was a pretty damn good plan overall. And so not surprising that, uh, that they have now ignored it because they don't, again, here's the thing. This has been, in my opinion, Brad, this has always been about avoidance, avoiding the main issue. And I was talking about this yesterday with, uh, with Rob Myers. This has always been about avoiding the issue of spending. And Rob, Rob makes the point that, you know, what happens if we get new oil revenues? What happens if we do drill for more oil? Well, what happens is they spend all that money too. Because we have not addressed the main issue. The boogeyman in the room, the 10 million pound elephant, is the fact that they will spend every dollar that crosses their desk plus some. There's no appetite to quell the spending in the state of Alaska. Well, and 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 this certainly and 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 this certainly this certainly doesn't put a constraint on that because they have PFDs. I mean, they can just keep cutting the PFDs. So when the governor talks about we need nine hundred million dollars in four in four fiscal years in order to balance the budget, fine, we'll just take it out of the PFD. I mean, it's just they have the revenues. It, the, the revenues go through their fingers on the on the on the way to Alaskan families, just like your stock your stockbroker. The revenues go through his fingers from from your investments. The revenues go through his fingers on the way to your on the way to your family. Except in this case, the state's just you know got sticky fingers. The state's just hanging on to that money on yeah. on its way to you. So they've got the revenues. It's just yeah. it's just a question of of you know not having substitutes for those revenues and and, and yeah. as a and as a consequence continuing to take the PFD. And as a it is and again that's a short term fix. It's a nine hundred million dollar pretty soon when you reach into the billion dollar territory, there is no PFD. And yet the deficits continue and they continue to grow. And so that means in the future, 
we'll be right back here going, well, we need some more taxes because we're, you're not paying your fair share. You haven't paid taxes. That's how it works. Brad Keithley, Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets. We're coming up on number two. Uh, brief synopsis for number two, Brad. <laughs> Can I be brief? <laughs> uh, give me, give me, give me the snapshot here before we. Uh, the snapshot. The snapshot is James Brooks has been running a running a series or writing a series of articles, and others have been writing a series of articles about K through twelve education, about about the need for additional funding or the the efforts of, for additional funding. But they're leaving out one particular fact that I think is critical for Alaskans to uh, to understand, and uh, and and we're going to talk about what that fact is. Let's get to number two which is the one thing that always gets left out. I mean, we, you know, story after story, article after article, opinion piece after opinion piece, all on K through 12. And there's so much disingenuousness, falsehoods, outright blatant lies, and even lies of omission in these articles. But Brad is zeroed in on one thing that is, is, is missing from every one of them. Brad? What, well, uh, you're yeah, you, you're going to go on about the other thing, so I don't I don't need to worry I, I, about them. I, I, I'm going to be quiet about it. I'm going to let you just talk about the one. <laughs> I want to get to number three, so go ahead. Well, the one the one thing that really always bugs me is they don't talk about the consequences of who pays. Here's here's what James has got in this particular story. I'm looking at uh, it, it's a story from a few days ago talking about the education funding bill, and it says barring an unexpected surge in the price of oil which would lift state revenue, spending more money on schools would require significant immediate tax increases or spending less money on something else. And the million, multi-billion dollar cost of the dividend is by far the largest piece of the budget. Based on the number of, and then skipping down some, based on the number of students enrolled in Alaska's K through 12 schools, a $1,000 per student increase would cost more than 130 million per year. That's roughly equivalent to $205 subtracted from the permanent fund dividend based on the number of recipients in 2022. All right, all of that is fine. He's talking about if you don't if you don't have some alternative source of revenue then it's going to come out of the PFD and here's the impact on the PFD. The thing that's always missing from this story is who pays who who who's bearing the burden of that 205 million uh, of that $205. What's the consequence to Alaska families of that two hundred five, uh, two hundred five dollars, and 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 he he misses the point. He excludes the point that the burden falls hardest on middle and lower income Alaska families, and it is the revenue approach that has the largest adverse impact of all of the alternatives. It's the revenue approach that has the largest adverse impact on the overall Alaska economy. It's it's it, it, the basic facts of yeah your PFD is going to be less, but in the but in the scheme of things, who's getting hurt by that? What Alaska's what Alaska families are getting hurt by that? What's happening to the economy as a result of that? Um, he's he's just skipping over it, and it's not like the facts aren't out there. The undisputed facts aren't out there. The two one. 2016 ICER study and the and the 2017 ITEP study tell you exactly who gets hurt by that and tell you exactly what the consequences to the Alaska economy is of that and tell you exactly how that compares to the impact of, of substitute revenue sources to 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 meet uh, to meet the additional spending requirements or to meet meet the shortfall. It's not like the facts aren't out there. The facts are sitting right there, but for but for some reason. Uh, uh, James's stories and other stories, the ADNs, uh, uh, guilty of it as well. They never take the next step and talk about who's getting hurt by that. And so, you know, you have middle and, and lower income Alaska families that are sitting there going, I don't know, I guess we have to, you know, I guess we have to pay it. No, you don't. There are alternatives that have a lower impact on you. There are alternatives that, that, that spread the burden of that cost more equitably. There are, there are alternatives that have a lower impact on the overall Alaska economy. We talk about the economy and the, and the importance of the economy and the importance of, of doing things that support the economy. Well, there are alternatives that have a lower imp adverse impact on the economy and are better for the economy. And there, there are things that, that don't have the same consequence to middle and lower income Alaska families. So it's it, by missing, by, by excluding that fact, James is not giving Alaska families the full story. He's not, enabling them to understand that there are, are that there are alternatives that would treat them better treat the overall Alaska economy better 
He's just leaving it at the at the blah. It's you know it's a two hundred dollars per per PFD as opposed to it's two hundred dollars per PFD. But if we did this, it would have a lower impact on eighty percent of Alaska families and be better for the overall Alaska economy. And I'm not I'm not suggesting that he editorialize that issue. There are facts in the 2016 ICER and 27 ITEP report ITEP reports that give him the factual basis to make those statements. Right. Uh, but they keep missing that. Uh, again, it's only $200. And I mean, then everybody pays and that's how it is. But it does not look at the, again, the uh, the ratio of impact to the various uh, Alaskans around the state. And again, going back to the one lever that ICER said was not the lever to pull. Please don't pull. They had a big sign on it. it says, please don't pull this lever. Please, please don't. And yet they continued to do so. Um, and that's part of the problem. Uh, and yes, there's many other falsehoods and lacks and, and omissions in this article, but this is just par for the course. This is boilerplate what we're going to see in the news for the rest of this session. And this this is the Kathy Giesel spin. I mean, this is the spin that Natasha von Himhoff and Kathy Giesel want the news to give, right? They want the news to give the spin, yeah, that everybody have, just have to pay essentially a head tax, $200, go on, that's, that's how we're going to raise it. As opposed to, as opposed to, hey, this is the worst alternative you could take for covering for covering these additional costs. There are alternatives that would have a lower impact on eighty percent of Alaska families. There's there are alternatives that would have a lower pack impact on the overall Alaska government. And you know, and and so you know, von Imhoff and and Giesel get away with their spin without because the news isn't giving the facts that the additional facts that provide the context to understand that we're taking the worst alternative, as you said, pulling the lever that, that ICER said, please don't pull. Yeah, no, exactly. And this is, again, this is the advocacy journalism that we're seeing these days uh, in the state. I mean, quite around everywhere, pretty much, but the state of Alaska, especially, there is just, there's no balance. I mean, we saw this on the defined benefits uh, article that was out yesterday, five people all in favor and why it's all well and good. And one comment from Tom McKay as to why it may not work because of the funding mechanism of it and the, and the cost of it. But I mean, there's just, there's no balance in anything that we're talking about. Um, all right. Uh, we're going to get to number three. Boom. Right there. You got a bone to pick with the Alaska policy form, which usually is pretty good on a lot of these things. Uh, and I'm not as mad as, well, I mean, I don't know if you're mad, but I'm not as, uh, um, uh, anyway, number three, go <laughs> opinion piece from Eric Cordero, Gior, uh, Gior, Georgiana, Georgiana. Uh, over yeah. there at the policy forum. So Eric, Eric's a, a friend. Eric's been on staff for uh, for various legislators for a number of years. He's moved over to uh, the Alaska Policy Forum, and 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 I and I appreciate and and understand and support uh, uh, what he does. But this article is horrible. This article talks about, and we've talked about this report before. This is a report from the Tax Foundation, the DC-based Tax Foundation, that looked at at the consequence of the impact of an income tax or a sales tax on Alaska and talked about all of the adverse impact that it would that would have on Alaska families and talk about the adverse impact it would have on the Alaska economy. There's nothing in there, there the, the PFD, the, the, the problem I have with the report is it doesn't compare it to the PFD. It sort of says, we've got this blank slate, we don't wanna have taxes, here's all the bad things that happen from taxes. It doesn't, it doesn't address the fact that we already have even more bad things happening because we we're, we're using PFD cuts to fund instead, it doesn't it doesn't say it doesn't it doesn't compare the impact of the things that they say would be bad from from these additional steps. It doesn't compare those to what we're already facing. It doesn't compare it to the actual baseline. It it makes up a baseline that says, well, we don't have anything going on right now. So if we have taxes, it would be bad. The 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 the, the correct analysis, the way an, a, an economist would look at this is. What's the baseline we've got right now? The baseline we've got right now is PFD cuts. Right. Taxes would be better than PFD yes. cuts. Taxes still may be bad, but they're a better way of raising revenue. They're better for 80% of Alaska families. They're better for the overall economy uh, than, uh, uh, than, than, than continuing PFD cuts. And so this article goes through all sorts of bad things. You know, out-migration taxes would, would worsen out-migration. Um, uh, it would add a grievous, this means that New personal income taxes foisted on Alaskans would add a grievous financial burden to those already struggling to get by. The PFD cuts are doing it all worse. If right. taxes if taxes have an adverse impact um, on Alaska families, 
it, it have an adverse impact on, on out migration. PFD cuts are having a, a worse impact on out migration. If taxes would have uh, would add to a grievous increase on the financial burden, PFD cuts are even worse for the and so it's 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 the lack of of reference to the baseline that we're already experiencing and comparing you know this step against that baseline that that really you know sends well, me off sends me off into the stratosphere let me tell you what the headline should read it shouldn't read here's what it should it reads personally it says personal taxes on alaskans would be harmful what it should read is personal taxes on alaskans would be harmful and the pfd cut is a tax that's what that's what it should read because the PFD and, and his whole argument would still be valid, except for now you're saying we're already being taxed at the PFD. It's already happening. I mean, that should be the battle cry. But what they're trying to do, what 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 policy forum is trying to do is is avoid referring to the PFD cut. They're just taking the PFD cut as a given. Essentially, the policy the policy forum has moved into the camp of well, the PFD spending. So don't worry about that. What we what we what we don't need are new revenue items. And 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 they're trying to they're trying to ignore the PFD cuts and say, yeah, taxes are bad. Don't do taxes. Everything else, just just leave it the way it is. Don't layer taxes on top. When in fact, taxes substituting taxes for PFD cuts would improve Alaskans' lives. Would improve uh, uh, the the out migration we're seeing. Would Im if, if all of this stuff they say about the adverse impact of taxes is is true, taxes would be better than continuing down the baseline we have of, of PFD cuts. I mean, I can see definitely your heartburn with this article. Don't get me wrong. But I mean, again, that, that's the thing. They That's the one thing that you you and I agree on. They has completely avoided the fact he doesn't want to mention the PFD cuts. He doesn't want to talk about it. They don't want to mention it because it is all the things that he just said could be based into the argument of saying, well, yes, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Uh, by the way, the PFD cut is a tax. So all those things you just laid out of how bad they are, they're happening right now. You know, this I mean, that's a that's a full on argument for getting a spending under control. Um, you know, changing the tax revenue, that's going to be a hard sell for many people. It still is a hard sell for many people, because, again, many of us feel like if they just change it, I mean, yes, the 20% would be more invested, but they're still going to, I mean, people are, there's still such an appetite for spending. They cannot stop themselves. But Michael, if we don't have substitute tax, we're, we're we, this state's not going to adopt spending cuts only, right? We found yeah. that out. Yeah, we tried. I mean, I'm, I'm still in favor of it, but find me the people who will pull the lever to say yes. We, 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 we tried that in 2019. It failed. So we're going to have some form of, of, of new revenues. The question is what form of new revenues we're going to have. And we ought to, and, and, and that ought to be a question that we focus on. What form of new revenues are we going to have? And there ought to be two big criteria. One is three big criteria. What's the impact on Alaska families of, of each of these revenue sources? What has the least impact on, least adverse impact on Alaska families? What's the impact on the overall economy of the various revenue sources? Let's find the one that has the least adverse impact on the overall Alaska economy? And what's the revenue source that creates the greatest incentive for getting spending under control? We ought to find the revenue source that has that has the, the, the greatest potential for getting spending under control. And the, and, and the rev, various revenue sources have different impacts, as we've talked about, different impacts on creating incentives for, um, uh, for spending, for getting impacts on, on getting spending under, under control. That's, that ought to be the discussion we have. What this article is doing is assuming we've baked in PFD cuts, right? Don't worry, we've locked in PFD cuts. Let's not have any other form of revenue other than PFD cuts. Let's continue to let's continue to use PFD cuts because they're not arguing. This article doesn't argue. Let's get let's do spending cuts only and have no revenues on top of and have no new revenues. All it's saying is let's not have these type of new revenues. Leaving PFD cuts is the only source. Um, of revenues. And so what, what this article is really saying is let's use, let's continue to use the, 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 the revenue source that has the largest adverse impact on 80% of Alaska families has the largest adverse impact on the overall Alaska economy and has the least ab, uh, am impact on getting spending under control because you leave the top 20% um, entirely out of it. And that's, so if you're going to write an article about revenue sources and, and, and just, and leave out <laughs> And say, oh, these are these revenue sources are bad. 
and leave out the revenue source we're using that is worse than those, it, it's not an article that's it's not an article that's useful. It's not an article that it's not an article that's fair uh, uh, in addressing the current Alaska situation. I uh, you know I, again I I have the same problems, Brad. That I I mean I agree. If we're going to have a conversation, we need to address and talk about the best revenue source, the best taxation possible. But again, I am still not convinced, and I think many people are not convinced that once we have another revenue, they won't still continue to cut the PFD. I mean, right, where, so. where's the guarantee? I mean, that's the problem that you, I mean, they, and I agree with you. I mean, I think a flat tax is the best of all tax options. I think that if we're going to look at revenue sources, that's probably where we need to be because it hits everybody equally. But again, what is the stumbling block for them to not say, oh, well, we could do that. And then we can offset some of those taxes with a PFD cut. And so it doesn't hit every, so instead of a 2% or a 3% flat tax, it'll be a one and a half percent flat tax and we'll take the rest from the PFD. So what's the, you know, what's the, that would, that would still be better off. We'd still be better off with that, by the way. I mean, a flat tax for any, any portion of the PFD replaced by a flat tax or any other form of taxation is better for Alaskans than strictly using than strictly using PFD cuts. But Michael, the answer the answer to that question is is the spending cap, right? I mean, it's it's the it's the answer that the that the administration came to in the FY twenty one ten year plan. It's the answer that the that the legislative working group fiscal policy working group came to, you know, two years ago. It's include a spending cap as part of the overall picture. Now you can't. You can't just do a spending cap and still leave the PFD out there, the PFD cuts out there dangling. That doesn't work. But, you know, as part of an overall plan to add in that additional guarantee, then you add on a spending cap and that and that locks in the, the guarantee that you're looking for. Well, again, <clears throat> lots of moving parts. Again, my major fear is they do everything except for put the spending cap in and then, you know. I mean, right? I mean, that's that's that it, you can't admit that that's not a possibility that they could do that and then put in some either don't put in a spending cap or they put in a spending cap that's so ineffectual it's basically useless. So, so we've seen the solution. The solution then is continued PFD cuts. I mean, you, know, you, you 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 argue your way out of everything else, and and where does that leave us? That leaves us with continued PFD cuts from now until until every, until the the end of time. And, right. and that and that's a solution. Again, that's a solution that has the largest adverse impact on the overall on 80 percent of Alaska families and on the overall economy. Right. Well, I mean, again, I'm, the, all the options are bad. Would you like the poop sandwich or the diarrhea milkshake? I would like neither. That's the problem. But I can't find anybody to support my idea of cutting the state government down to a sustainable level. So, I mean, so you know. so no. So no alternative revenues. We'll just keep using it. We'll make up these fictional no, revenues. I, no, just, I'm, I'm with you, Brad. Don't get me wrong. I'm with you. We have to address this in some way. My, But again, we have to be prepared for the, we have to be prepared for what could possibly come down the road. And I think, again, possibly this could, you know, we have to just be ready for any eventuality in that case. I don't disagree, Michael, that we have to take it into account. I don't disagree that we have to structure it in a way to make sure that that doesn't happen. I don't disagree that we have to have a, a spending cap that, 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 that works along with everything else. That's fine. But to continue to say, we can't talk about alternative revenues because, oh my God, this might happen. All that, where that leaves us is continued PFD cuts. Boy, we just, I look, uh, I, Brad's still in the green room. So maybe I should bring him back just because we were just, we were, we were arguing here during the commercial break over it. And, and I don't know if it was an argument that we were actually arguing with each other or at, uh, at, at cross points. Uh, I'm going to bring Brad back on actually, just because I think this is, this is interesting <laughs> because no, I mean, you're not wrong. This is the thing. So for just to set up some context, I was talking to Brad about the problem of, you know, what if we, get a flat tax, you know, which is, is the best form. I think we've all agreed. Well, maybe not you, not everybody, but Brad and I have agreed that if you're going to have to, if you have to have, if you must have the gun pointed at your head, it must be the smallest caliber gun possible. And that's what we're looking at. The, the flat tax is a good tax. But I said, what is to say they don't get the flat tax and then they like, oh, look, we got a flat tax. Oh, and we could still take the PFD as well, because that's still more money in the room. And Brad's like, well, then we do nothing. And then what good is that if we've done nothing? But I, and I'm not disagreeing with you. We should not continue to have a cuts only or a, a, a PFD tax only approach. I think we should have a cuts only approach, but we don't have anybody else that thinks the same thing that we do. 
So Brad and I were just arguing about it. I, Brad, I, I agree with you. I, I, of all the taxes, the flat tax is the good one. But I, I think we just have to be prepared that if we do go down that road, they are going. I mean, you say, well, they have to have a spending cap. Well, but that's 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 assuming that they'll do both. This legislature can't chew gum and tie their shoes at the same time. They want to work at one little thing at a time. They don't want to do a pass an overall holistic approach of a spending cap and spending cuts and taxes and everything else all at once. They want to take just one bite at a time. And if we get a tax without a spending cap, we're in trouble. Okay. So we just keep PFD cuts. I mean, that's... <laughs> that's yeah, we're, 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 not gonna, we're not gonna try something else. We'll just keep doing PFD cuts and that and, and we'll just, you know, just keep going down the keep <laughs> keep doing keep going down the hole. I'm not an absolutist. I'm not saying that we have to. I'm just saying we should be prepared and maybe have a plan. I guess is what I'm saying, right? I mean, I guess that's what I'm saying is we, we gotta be prepared because past performance is indicative of future results. They have sucked up every available dollar in every room of the house for years and to think that we'll throw more money in there and they're not going to do it. We have to have a plan to counteract that. And the fiscal policy working group had a plan, Michael, the fiscal policy working group had a plan that was part spending cuts, part PFD, part PFD restructuring that resulted in PFD cuts and part uh, uh, new revenues capped off by a spending cap. They have a plan. And, 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 and for it, 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 it was frustrating to me, I guess what the frustration is coming out here is to say, well, we can't really talk about the new revenue part of the plan because because people just get upset about that. Well, okay, fine. Then that means PFD cuts because we are not going to have spending cuts only. I mean, as much as some people might want it, as much as you and I might want it, we're not going to have spending cuts only. There will be revenues. And if we don't have alternative revenues, they're going to continue to be PFD cuts. So I, yeah, we do have a plan. It's the fiscal policy working group plan. Let's, 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 let's target that. And let's talk about what the best what the best piece of the the best new revenue uh, piece of it is. But you know, to say we can't talk about new revenues is just oh well. We and I agree with that. I mean, you have to discuss everything, even things that you find unpalatable. I mean, right? I mean, unpalatable. I mean, that's it, nobody really wants to talk about it. But if it's gonna, if you're looking at the train coming down the track and you're about to get run over, you do have to discuss the best way to get off the track. I mean, whether, you know, even if there's no, it's a bridge and there's water on both sides, you still got to talk about the uncomfortable things that we need to talk about. I'm definitely not saying that. Um, I, again, am still a fan of the cuts only approach. I, I agree with what Chris says. People, plenty of people think it's the, that, that cuts only is the best solution. Only the special interests collectively disagree which is true, but the problem is the special interests have got their hand firmly on the wheel. We can't, I mean, yes, I've been crying about cutting the government for 22 years on this radio program and nobody's listening. I mean, that's just what it is, right? I mean, Chris, Brad? Chris, we, Chris, we, is, Chris is listening. I we, we tried that in 2019. I mean, what happened? The governor almost got recalled. It took COVID. <laughs> essentially to prevent the governor from getting from going through a, a recall uh, uh, situation. So, uh, you know, we've tried that. It's not it didn't work. It's not going to work. We've tried electing new legislators. It's it's keeps getting worse uh, in, instead of better. It's time to face up to the fact we're not going to get spending cuts only. If we ever get spending cuts only, it's because the top 20 percent will finally the the donor class, the 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 lobbyist class will finally get engaged to push back on spending. It's it, we're not going to get spending cuts only, you know, just with the, with the PFD sitting out there as the as the alternative revenue source. So, you know, if we don't, if we're not going to talk about alternative revenues, we're not going to talk about substitutes for PFD cuts as part of an overall plan. As part of an overall plan, let me let me let me add that phrase. Maybe that will help. Um, uh, if we're not going to talk about substitute revenues as part of an overall plan, then we're just done. I mean, we're done. We're, you and I are going to be bitching about PFD cuts. Can I say that? Anyway, you and I are going to be complaining about PFD cuts all the way to the, to the end of, of my life, certainly. And, 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 and beyond that. So it's, I, it, we, we either talk about something that's a realistic, better way right. to deal with Alaska's fiscal situation, or we just accept that we're going to have the worst and keep on going keep on going down that road and saying, oh, right. well, we, we tried, didn't work. Yeah, too bad.
Yeah. Well, and we did try cuts. I mean, Chris says that we did not try cuts. We did try cuts. Now, Dunleavy did fold like a house of cards. I mean, he rolled over a wet on himself fast. There was a recall. It was again a full court press from the from the uh, from the fifth uh, from the fifth estate. You know about sky is falling and dogs and cats living together, mass hysteria and all that kind of stuff. But we did try it, and there was such a huge pushback from the special interest. They garnered the day. That, I, mean, I think anybody is terrified to talk about the cuts only approach now. Dunleavy didn't couldn't even get sixteen when, when when push came to shove at the end of the day. Dunleavy couldn't even get sixteen to back him up for the level of cuts he proposed for the level of cuts it would take to have a spending cuts only. There, you you, you look at the even that legislature had had sixteen conservatives, twenty conservatives in it. He couldn't get sixteen of them to back him up on the level of cuts he was proposing. Everybody was going, yeah, cut everything else except my deal. Right. And by the and by the time you have, you know, the 20 or 25 legislators all say or the 16 legislators all saying that, cut everything except my deal. There, there wasn't 16 there to back up the level of cuts he needed. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, we, again, articulating the plan and yeah, going back to the fiscal policy working group, I think it is a plan. Uh, I, I think it's a I think it's a workable plan. The House has said the House majority has said they're going to use that as is a roadmap to go forward um, and, and do that. But we do have to have I mean, I, we're going to continue to talk about other tax revenues. We're going to do it on this program. We're going to talk about it. I may not like it. I may not be happy about it. I may be fearful of what happens when you give them more revenue. But if we don't, I mean, if we don't at least discuss it, then what's going to happen? They're going to continue to take the PFD. And what will happen in five years, there will be no PFD left because they will have consumed it all and they will have grown the size of government to continue to consume it every year and it will be gone. It will be a non-entity. And then as it continues to grow, well, then they'll start talking about taxes again. And because we refuse to discuss the best option and the way to do it, we're going to get steamrolled yet again. So while I disagree with Brad in the one aspect, I agree on the other because we, had, if we had a plan, if we had a plan and a plan that could do it and we had the people to be able to put it through like a spending cap and some of these other pieces and a holistic approach, we could, we could do that. I mean, right. We could, we could take another crack at this with, uh, with other revenues and at least see what happens. I mean, what's the, you know, see what happens. That's what the fiscal policy working group did. I mean, they, they, they sat down. You had ben, everybody from Ben Carpenter to Jonathan Christ Tompkins on the, on the committee, Jesse Keel on the committee. Uh, you had conservatives and uh, the right of the legislature, the left of the legislature. Uh, and they agreed on this plan that included some, some alternative revenues to replace uh to replace PFD cuts. The governor's FY21 10-year uh, plan had that same approach. A little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of something else so that no one entity takes takes the hit. Uh and 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 that's what it's going to that's what that's what we're going to that's what we're going to need to do. So, yeah, you you and I can argue about you and I can argue about this, but in the context in the context of an overall plan, in the context, let's just take the fiscal policy working group plan as a given in the in that context in the in the in, in the context of an overall plan, we're going to need alternative revenues as part of that. If we don't have alternative or substitute revenues as part of that, it's going to be PFD cuts. I mean, it, it, that's the problem with the spending cap. You can you can set a spending cap, but if you don't solve the PFD situation, what's going to happen is you're just going to take you know PFD cuts all the way up to the spending cap, and the things that are outside the spending cap, like like the capital budget and other things, they'll take the PFD for that too because they won't have any substitute revenues. So substitute revenues have to be part of, of any plan and for and to and to pick on them and say, we're not going to do substitute revenues. Then we're just saying, right. okay, the FD cuts all the way down to the end. Well, and I agree with that. I, I would agree that you have to discuss substitute revenues. I mean, and from a personal standpoint, if I could make them, if I could wave a magic wand today and say, you know, put into place, you know, we have to have the same revenues and everything else, but put into place. If I waved a magic wand and had a 3% flat tax today, uh, I mean, my family, we would be well ahead with a 3% flat tax versus a PFD cut because, I mean, they're taking, uh, you know, they're taking a good nine, eight, nine, ten percent 10% of our overall income based on just taking the dividends, right? So a 3% flat tax would be great for my family. Um, but again, my fear is they take the 3%, 
and yet they still carve into the other. So all right. But, so it's, so it's got to be in the context of the overall plan that includes a spending cap. But, exactly. Yeah. It's got to be. I mean, that's the thing. We we've, we've got to we've got to find that whole. I don't know. And, I, and here's the and so back to where we were in segment three. Here's the problem with the Alaska Policy Forum piece. It doesn't talk about uh, alternative revenues in that context. It just says alternative right. revenues are bad. We can't. Oh, we can't have those because they'd have a bad impact on the economy. What they don't say is, in the context of an overall solution, they'd be, they'd actually have a positive impact on the economy because they take away they take away the worst alternative. They take away some of the worst alternative, which is PFD cuts. So it's it, it's a misleading piece. It's a misleading argument that the policy forum is putting out there by just focusing on that particular piece and saying that's bad. We can't do that. We right. have to do that right. as part of the overall plan. I agree with that. I agree. All right. Well, thanks for sticking over and arguing with me because <laughs> that was fun. Uh, but I mean, again, even though I disagree with the principle of taxes in general. I mean, I, I think that's just a generalized taxation is theft, and I agree. But we're already being taxed, so we have to discuss all the options that are on the table. As un, as distasteful as that may be, and as much as that may rankle your libertarian slash conservative slash Republican feathers, we still have to talk about it. The pros and cons, at least, have a discussion about it. But we're going to. Um, we're going to have to see. I, I mean, I, at this point, am doubting whether there's the political will to even take up the fiscal policy working group plan. There may be in the House majority, but now you've got the minority plus the plus the Senate and everything else. It's going to be very difficult. It's going to be very, very Plus difficult. the governor. I mean, the governor's often is, you know, fantasy world of, of, uh, of, of these carbon management revenues <laughs> solving the entire yeah. problem. So the governor's yeah. got to get, governor's got to re-engage. Well, it's uh, an interesting conversation, if nothing else, and uh, one that I think we will continue to have. Brad Keithley, Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets. Thank you, Brad, for coming on board. And Michael, as always, party. thanks for having me. Well, that's a wrap for another week's edition of the Weekly Top 3 from Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets. Thank you again for joining us. Remember that you can find past episodes on our YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify, and Substack pages. And keep track of us during the week on Facebook and Twitter. This has been Brad Keithley, Managing Director of Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets. We look forward to you joining us again next week on the Weekly Top 3.